Today,、uh, what we are going to do is to learn about non point source pollution.、Uh, last time, I mentioned that there are two different types of the water pollution. The first one is the point source pollution, and the second one is the non point source pollution. And、uh, in the class,、uh, we, we mentioned about this、uh, point source pollution. So, in this time,、uh, what we are going to do is to focus on this non point source pollution because it's still、uh, very important. In developed countries, point source pollution is not a big problem because there are a lot of very good. Uh, wastewater treatment plants, advanced treatment processes, so that we can control this, the release of pollutant from these point source. However, non point source pollution is much more difficult to control. This is why、uh, we are getting more and more interested in this non point source pollution. As I mentioned, Water pollution comes from point source and non point sources.、Uh, point sources means、uh, it is located at some specific places and it's easy to identify and it's easy to monitor and it's easy to regulate. So, there are a lot of examples. For instance, A wastewater treatment plant is one of these、uh, point source pollutions. On the other hand, non point, source, non point sources are broad and they are located in diffuse areas and it is much more difficult to identify and control and it's more expensive to. Clean up. So,、uh, if you look at the places、uh, where these pollutants are deposited, and when you get some rainforest,、um, this is a very good example of non point source pollution. So, the agricultural activities、uh, can lead the water pollution. And this is one example of the non point source pollution.、Um, in these places, sediments eroded,、um, are eroded from the road, and there are fertilizers and pesticides which are required for this, the agricultural activities. But if they come into these water bodies, they are very bad. Water pollutant. Of course, there are bacteria from、uh, livestock and food processing waste, and they are problematic. And not only the bacteria, but also these, the organic matters are also,、um, they can also、uh, cause problems. And there are some industrial facilities、uh, where the、uh, pollutants are not. Created in a specific place, and there are another industry which is uh, in, uh, related to this non point source pollution, which is the mining. So, mining means we get some uh, valuable uh, minerals, but、uh, during this process,、uh, there are a lot of pollutants uh, um, created, and again, when we get some rainfalls. Uh, storm waters and, and these、um, the, uh, heavy metals and sediments can get into these water bodies, and this can uh, actually um, de deteriorate this water quality.、Um, another example of this non foreign source、uh, pollution is,、um, for, in for instance, parking lots. And if you look at this place,、uh, there are some、uh, the pollutants on the parking lots, and、uh, this can come with the、uh, rainwater. 
and this can actually cause uh, water pollution. Human-made materials like plastics and other kind of things, and of course they can cause water pollution. And in these days, the climate change is a very big problem. Uh, it, this is an important issue. And the, the reason why we have this climate change is because um, there is a phenomena called this global warming. Again, the problem is, uh, the, the, is the release of the green gas, greenhouse gases such as uh, carbon dioxide. And this is a very complicated process. Uh, but as a result of this, this greenhouse gas, global warmings, we get climate change, and this causes the um, uh, unexpected uh, rainfalls, and again, this can cause um, water pollution, water contamination. Okay, uh, this picture shows some examples of the point source. So, this discharge pipeline is connected to some facilities like a wastewater treatment facility or industrial wastewater treatment systems and I guess this uh, is not um, this is a very problematic I mean uh, I guess the wastewater is not properly treated in, in this specific example but normally the wastewaters are treated um, based on these regulation guidelines. However, even after the proper treatment, this wastewater can contain some amount of organics and the ions and toxic compounds and they can cause water pollution. And so this type of this water pollution is the point source of water pollution. <clears throat> On the other hand, this picture shows an example of non point source pollution from unprotected uh, farmland. Uh, and the, this is actually the farmland. And when we get some rainfalls, the sediments are coming from this farmland to the um, water bodies. So you can see that there are uh, lead zones which is contaminated by these uh, sediments. So these blue waters are damaged by these pollutants coming from the land. And as you can see that, um, the whole place is kind of these are uh, generation places, generation points for these water pollutants so that we can categorize this type of the water pollution as this non point source water pollution. Uh, in fact, there are uh, many different pollutants that we have to consider uh, because they have some harmful effect. Uh, there are infectious um, uh, disease organisms which can contaminate drinking water and this is directly connected to the human health. So this is one of the major concerns when we look at this uh, water pollution. And the World Health Organization or WHO and according to this WHO, 3 million people die every day, every year, uh, mostly under age of 5 and one of the reasons is this uh, pathogenic microorganisms. In addition to the pathogen, there are many different types of the water pollutants. Um, pathogens and organics, which are also known as the oxygen demanding waste. And they are, um, for instance, the biodegradable animal waste and plant debris are kind of these uh, water pollutants. And in this case, the main source is sewage, um, animal uh, feedstocks, and food processing facilities, something like that.
So these wastewaters contain high concentration of organics and that can actually lower this, the water quality in the river or in the lake. Plant nutrients can cause excessive growth of algae and other species, and which is known as the eutrophication. Ultra, and uh, the major the nutrient that we have to look at are the nitrate and phosphate. And the major source of these pollutants are sewage, animal waste, and inorganic fertilizers. Uh, there are also organic chemicals which add toxins to the aquatic systems. So, for instance, oil, gasoline, plastic, pesticides, cleaning solvents from industry, farms, and household can cause this kind of harmful effect to our the ecosystem. Inorganic chemicals can also add toxins to the aquatic systems. So the acid, base, salt, metal compounds such as heavy metals are the problems. Sediments can disrupt photosynthesis because it can, you know, um, it can prevent this, the penetration of light to the water bodies. And this can also uh, disrupt these uh, food webs and other processes. So soil seals are the major uh, the uh, problems uh, caused by land erosion. Heavy metals cause, can cause cancer, and this can disrupt the immune systems, and this can also uh, the interrupt some the end, endocrine systems. So lead, mercury, arsenics are very toxic heavy metals, and that should be controlled. Uh, okay, of course, there are other chemicals that can cause uh, problems. Uh, uh, this table summarizes the type of organisms and uh, disease uh, caused by these pathogens. So, for instance, bacteria can cause uh, typhoid uh, typho fevers, cholera, and other these uh, diseases. And viruses can also cause some disease. And not only the bacteria and viruses. But also the uh, the pathogenic uh, protozoa can cause uh, diseases such as the uh, giardiasis and uh, cryptosporidia, and um, uh, we also have some the pathos, uh, uh, parasitic uh, worms that can cause uh, disease. So um, due to these uh, due to these um, reasons, we have to control these the uh, pathogens in, in our water. So water pollution is a big problem um, and so we have to test water for pollutants and there are a variety of tests to determine water quality. So for instance coliform bacteria uh, are used to measure the level of these um, pathogens, the, the um, uh, pathogens in the waters. And the level of the dissolved oxygen is also measured and we also carry out some chemical analysis. In fact, there are many pathogens in the water and we cannot analyze all of them. So instead of measuring everything, what we have to do is to measure some representative of the microorganisms so that we can understand how many microorganisms exist in the water. So these make the microorganisms are called as indicator species. So for instance, E. coli is a very good example of an indicator species because E. coli does not cause very serious waterborne disease, but when we can find E. coli, uh, there is a possibility 
that we can find other pathogenic uh, microorganisms. So we measure E. coli because it's easy, it's uh, relatively simple to uh, measure this the E. coli concentration. Bacteria and yeast grow glow in the presence of a particular toxic uh, chemicals. So this is uh, so called this endo. Uh, this is uh, another way to measure the level of these toxins in the water. So we can use some specific bacteria or microorganisms, and by measuring these the um, some fluorescence light, we can actually quantify the level of tox the con the toxin concentration uh, in the water. Color and turbidities are general indicators to measure the water quality. Uh, one of the simple uh, indicators for water quality is dissolved oxygen. And when the water quality is very good, the dissolved concentration in water at 12, uh, 20 Celsius degree is 8 or 9. And if the water is slightly polluted, the dissolved concentration is reduced to 6.7 to 8. And when the water pollution is getting more serious, we can see, uh, we can find a lower dissolved oxygen concentration because microorganisms in the water consume dissolved oxygen so that um, these, the oxygen is depleted in the water. So if the water is very, very uh, highly polluted, this dissolved oxygen is even lower than 4 and under these conditions, um, most aquatic animals such as fishes uh, can be um, affected. Um, what are the major water pollutant problems in the stream and lake? Uh, while streams are uh, the extensively polluted worldwide by human activities, they can uh, clean themselves of many pollutants if we do not overload them or reduce their flows. So this is so-called a natural clarification process done by the bacteria in the in the water. But if you ac actually if we actually exceed the the capacity of the natural clarification, the water quality uh, is affected. The addition of excessive nutrient to lake from human activities can disrupt lake ecosystem and prevention of such pollution is more effective and less costly than cleaning it up. So it's very important when the water in the lake or in the river are polluted, it is much more difficult to clean up. But if we can somehow prevent that kind of water pollution, that's more economic. I mean, we have to um, spend less money to prevent water pollution than to um, clean up or restore the water quality. And there are some mechanisms that for the natural clarification. Uh, one of them is dilution because when we put some <clears throat> pollutant, they are naturally diluted, so the concentration is uh, reduced. But uh, the more important mechanism is the biodegradation by bacteria, but the only problem is it takes time. So if, we, they, if they don't have enough time, the water quality cannot be restored. So the oxygen is kind of limiting factor uh, for this, this biodegradation so that the dissolved oxygen is very important. Um, okay, this nice picture shows the natural uh, uh, clarification process. And so what you can see is this is 
the place where the pollutants are coming into the water body and this place is the clean zone so there is no uh, water pollutants but when we get the water pollutants from this place so this is a river you can imagine that the water flows from left side to the right side and um, initially the water the dissolved oxygen concentration is relatively high but when we get some uh, water pollutants the dissolved oxygen concentration starts to decrease and suddenly the water pollutant concentration increase and it decreases with um with this uh, with uh, this one so it means that these bacteria in the water decompose these um the the pollutants and as a result of that this bacteria consumes the dissolved oxygen so it's good um we have lower concentration of water pollutant but somehow uh, somewhere um in some places uh we have problems like you know the dissolved oxygen concentration is too low that this bacteria cannot work properly so instead of using uh, instead of using uh the aerobic bacteria the anaerobic bacteria should uh, play an important role from this place. So what you can see is that we can find different type of the bacteria and different type of this, the, um, the living creatures in this zone because there, are, there is no enough dissolved oxygen. So we, cannot, we can find very different conditions in this place and this is so called the septic zone. And when this uh, uh, when this pollutant concentration is uh, lowered, and then this dissolved oxygen concentration it start to increase, so that again we can see that um, there are enough uh, the dissolved oxygen and this pollutant concentration is relatively low so that this water quality is recovered so that we call this place as the recovery zone. Finally, we can have the clean water just um, like the conditions that we don't have any water floatant. So this is water, um, natural water uh, clarification. In the United States, um, there is a history of the water pollutant content, the control. So, for instance, in 1970s, um, the water pollution control rules are created, and there are some successful water cleanup stories in the United States and Great Britain, uh, some um, some developed countries. And so, in this case, the contamination of toxic inorganic and organic chemicals by industry and mines were controlled by applying new technologies, new treatment strategies, and new uh, the water pollutant guidelines. So, in the developed countries like the United States and Great Britain, uh, water pollutants from point source are not very problematic. But still in developing countries, the, the water pollutants from point sources are still uh, very big problems. So half of the world's uh, 500 rivers are seriously polluted due to untreated sewage, industrial waste, um, so, uh, the example is the Indian slivers or China slivers due to rapid industrializations 
without proper uh, treatment of these uh, pollutant, water pollutants, the river qualities are not very good. So this is kind of this issue for these the engineers in this country in these countries. So they are working on to uh, reduce this concentration of water pollutants and recover the water water quality in these our uh, rivers and lakes. So in this picture, what you can see is the sewage. Uh, the river water filled with uh, low sewage and because these sewage are not properly treated so you can learn how you can see how important the proper treatment of sewage is the another example so this is a river water and you can see a lot of um, uh, very bad things in the river waters and this is highly faulted due to um, this insufficient treatment so again the by controlling these uh, water pollutants uh, we can recover this water quality uh, another example and trash trucks disposing of garbages um, in a river. So these garbages are directly coming into the river without any proper treatment, and these uh, these pollutants can actually um, reduce the water quality. Uh, there are a lot of case studies. For instance, in India, um, they have uh, the Holy River, and this is this has some religious customs. Uh, but the problem is the these the sewage coming into the rivers, and still um, many people uses uh, this river. So this is a problem. So the government intervention was done to build a uh, wastewater treatment plants, something like that. Uh, there are two reasons um, that add to the pollution. The first one is the religious custom, which is a unique situation in India. But the second one is more, you know, global issue, which is a global warming due to this the, uh, greenhouse effect. So this is a Ganges liver and many people use this, this uh, these liver waters but the problem is the water quality is not good so that can cause some sanitary problems so that, that should be done, that should be, uh, that this kind of problem that should be solved. Uh, when we think about the water pollution, uh, one thing that we have to consider is the water flow. And if we have low water flow and too little mixings, the water, water pollution becomes more serious. So uh, low water flow and too little uh, mixing can cause less effective um, ac the actions for diluting pollutants. So uh, for instance, uh, stratified, stratified layers can uh, interrupt this vertical mixing and sometimes uh, if the water flow rate is too low the pollutants are not diluted and that can be a problem. As I mentioned that this eutrophication, eutrophication is a problem caused by the uh, nutrients such as nitrate and phosphate and this can happen in many lakes due to excessive uh, growth of the algae. During hot weather or drought when where the water is not enough the algae blooms and this can we, uh, we can also see increased bacteria more nutrients and uh, also we can find some anaerobic bacteria which cause very bad smells uh, uh, from the water.
So in order to prevent the eutrophication, well, the first thing that we have to do is to remove nitrate and phosphate. They are the main reasons why we get this the eutrophication. And diversion of lake water is also effective to slow down this eutrophication process. Clean up lakes uh, by removing excessive weeds and by using herbicides and algae size, um, sometimes they are very effective, but this is not the ultimate solution because um, this has some side effect. The pumping of air into the lake can actually supply dissolved oxygen so that the lake has more the enhanced uh, biodegradation process so that this water quality can be recovered but this is also a little bit limited because um, if you consider a very if you imagine a very large lake waters and supplying the the air to this uh, large size lake is very expensive. Here we have a case study on the pollution in the Great Lakes. And in 1960s, many areas suffer from eutrophication in uh, in the Great Lakes. So in 1972. Canada and United States um, did some actions to control pollutant so that this the water quality in the Great Lakes um, becomes became better but the problems still exist due to low sewage and non points runoff of pesticides and fertilizers because um, around this, uh, the uh, Great Lakes, there are a lot of places that use pesticides and fertilizers and um, there are possibilities that they are coming when, the, uh, when, uh, when they have rainfall. Biological pollution is another problem. This, but, and one thing that we cannot they cannot control is the atmospheric deposition of pesticides and this mercury. So um, uh, the, uh, there are still problems, but by doing some actions, the water quality and water pollution problems were mainly solved in the Great Lake. In 2007, um, uh, new uh, pollutants were found in the Great Lake and wetland loss and degradations were observed and there are some other problems and uh, there are some debates going on to uh, prevent uh, these kind of problems. So this is a great lake and this is a huge lake so um, and there are a lot of places which Surround this great lake, and by uh, due to the human activities around this in the area near the great lake, the what this the water quality is affected. Not only the lake water or river water, but also the ground water. Ground water can have some uh, the water pollution. Chemicals used. In agriculture, industry, transportation, and homes can spill and leak into groundwater and make it, make it undrinkable. There are simple ways and complex ways to purify drinking water, but, the, but protecting it through pollution prevention is the least expensive and the most effective strategy. In contrast to the river water or lake water, natural cleanup process uh, of groundwater is not very good. So the, the water quality of the groundwater is generally very good, but once it is polluted, 
there is no way that it can be recovered uh, without any um, other means. So the common pollutants for the groundwater is fertilizers and pesticides, gasoline by split, spills, and organic solvents. And once these pollutants get into the uh, ground, groundwater aquifers, it disperses in a, a widening plume so that the effect is tremendous. As I explained, the natural uh, cleanup process is very slow in groundwater due to slow flow and less uh, the dissolved oxygen and fewer decomposing bacteria. So it takes very long time to recover the water quality by, um, and, uh, by this natural process. Um, and sometimes we even have some toxic chemicals which are not uh, biodegradable. For instance, DDT is not biodegradable. So once it is, uh, it it can it can it gets into the groundwater. This is a very big problem. So this picture shows how the groundwater can be polluted by various pathways. So, first of all, um, uh, first of all, these the hazardous waste can get into the injection well, and it can come into this groundwater aquifer. The very gasoline and solvent tank can be one of the reasons for the groundwater pollution. Septic tank, pesticides and fertilizers. Um, and uh, road salt, uh, waste lagoon, and accidental slit, landfill, and uh, uh, mining process, they they are or uh, they can also or cause the groundwater contamination. Once the groundwater is polluted. Um, it can cause uh, some the harmful effects, and in many places, groundwater is used as a source of drinking water. So, if they use this ground polluted groundwater as the drinking water, they will have a very big problems. But even without using uh, groundwater as the as the drinking water. It can cause problems because um, if uh, the the pollutant in the groundwater can be can transport from the source to some specific site and somehow they can go into the uh, places where people are living and they can cause the harmful effect if this pollutant is the volatile. So this is the, the this is a reason why we have to control the groundwater contamination. So groundwater pollution is a serious threat. Uh, for instance, in China, uh, many contaminated or over exploited aquifers uh, are found in the United States. FDA reports of toxins found in many groundwater aquifers. So what about leaking on the ground storage tank? Uh, there are very harmful chemicals such as gasoline, oil, and MTV, and nitri nitrate ions, and they all cause serious problems when we drink the water contaminated with these chemicals. Another issue is the, the arsenic in the groundwater because um, um, some groundwater aquifers contains the arsenic and, and when the arsenic is a very uh, toxic chemical and it can cause cancer, 
like skin cancer, lung cancer, uh, and, and uh, so uh, we have to control this the arsenic pollutant contamination in the groundwater. But uh, it is very very expensive to recover the water quality of the groundwater after the groundwater pollution. So the pollution the pollution prevention is the only effective way to prevent protect groundwater because the cleanup is too expensive and it's time consuming process so that it is always better to prevent groundwater contamination. This picture shows the solutions of the for the uh, the groundwater pollution, the prevention measures and cleanup measures. So, for instance, uh, if we wanted to prevent the groundwater pollutions, we have to find the substitute for toxic chemicals and keep toxic chemicals out of the environment, and install some um, devices and equipment to prevent the groundwater pollution. Something like that. And if we wanted to clean up the groundwater pollution, we have to pump water from the groundwater aquifer and, and uh, clean up this water and ret uh, let this water return to this aquifer. As you can imagine, this is a very expensive process. Another way is to inject microorganisms to clean up contaminations, but it's less effective, but and but more the economic. Um, recently, the scientists has have investigated way of using nanoparticles to remove pollutants, but it's still being developed. And when you have some water pollutant in the drinking water, there are many ways to purify it. And we have reservoirs and uh, purification plants, and we can process sewer, sewer water to drinking water. And we can use UV light to disinfect the water, nanofilters, and recently in some places where the drinking water treatment facilities are does not exist do not exist uh, the some specific devices uh, such as the life straw is uh, are being used to uh, provide the drinking water so this is the life straw this is a personal water purification device so um, regardless of these water straws when we put this uh, small device to the water and suck it and, and the water pollutants are filtered out by the membranes inside this life straw so that, is the, uh, so that they can drink uh, clean water without uh, having any water contaminants. Uh, there is a case study on protecting watershed instead of building water purification plants in New York water, New York City waters. Um, there are reservoirs in some mountains and they try to protect the watershed instead of this water purification plant. When we want to protect the water quality, it is important to use laws because um, without these environmental regulations, there is no reason to uh, make people to clean up the water. So laws are very important. So here there is some examples of the, these laws related to the drinking water quality. And in every country, they have drinking water quality and laws, regulation on the drinking water quality and wastewater uh, on this um, discharge quality, something like that. Some people say 
instead of building the water purification plant, um, uh, we can just you uh, drink the the bottled water. But bottled water is not the ultimate solution. And some bottled waters are actually coming from tap water, so it's simply much more expensive by having it inside a bottle. But the water quality is very similar. And some people say that this bottled water can be contaminated by bacteria. And it's very expensive compared with the tap water. And we need to recycle the plastic. So it's not really environmentally friendly. So what you have to do is to stop using bottled water. Um, of course, there are some places where we have to use bottled water, but um, bottled water cannot completely replace the tap water. So here's some you know, videos regarding these, the, uh, the problems of the bottled water. So if you have some time, please visit this website and take a, uh, watch the video. Uh, there are also problems in water pollution in oceans. So the major, major the great majority of ocean pollution originates on the land and includes oils and other toxic chemicals and solid waste, which is threatened um, aquatic species and other wildlife and disrupt marine ecosystems. The key to protecting the ocean is to reduce the flow of pollutants from land and air and from streams uh, emptying into these waters. The ocean pollution is a growing issue, but um, it is poorly understood, so that's the problem. Um, previously, many people have focused on the problems in uh, the water pollution in rivers, lakes, and groundwater. Uh, so the ocean pollution was not the major issue. But recently, people have recognized that this ocean pollution is also a big problem. The 80% of marine pollution originate on land, sewage, and coastal areas are mostly affected. And there are many reasons. For instance, cruise line pollution is another reason of ocean pollution. And in the United States, uh, the ocean pollution was caused by low sewage and sewage and agricultural runoff containing nitrate and phosphate and harmful algae blooms, just like the eutrophication, this algae bloom um, is also a very big problem. And then we have the oxygen depleted zones in the ocean, so that's another a big problem. So this picture shows how the ocean pollution is um, occurs by many different reasons. Palms, runoff and pesticides, they can release the, um, some nutrients and some toxic chemicals to the oceans, and that's the problem. And due to these nutri the organics and nutrients, lead ties uh, are, uh, can, uh, can be caused and we can also have the the places where there's uh, no there's no enough the dissolved oxygen. This is called this the oxygen depleted zone. And when you have some industry near the ocean, um, due to the release of this industrial wastewater, the the water 
the ocean is also polluted. So not only the water but also the, the sediment can be contaminated by various chemicals. This picture shows how this, the ocean is affected by the, uh, the areas on the land. So uh, the Gulf of Mexico uh, has problems due to algae blooms. So that's the lead tie phenomena. And this is caused by depleted oxygen and release of these nutrients. And some people say the global warming is also one of the reasons of the algae blooms in the ocean. And uh, this is uh, one of the biggest problems in the, uh, the ocean water. Another big issue is the ocean oil pollution. So crude and refined petroleum can be released uh, by accident. So uh, for instance, in 1989, Exxon Valdez uh, oil tankers released split, spills the oils to the ocean. So that was a big problem. And there are a lot of uh, similar events that cause the ocean oil pollution. When we have oil in the ocean, the volatile organic hydrocarbons can kill many aquatic organisms or the organisms. And tall-like globes on the ocean's surface can coat animals. Again, this will lead to the deaths of this of the uh, the ocean animals. Heavy oil components sink affect the uh, bottom dwellers and it is known that this the uh, crude oil can be recovered faster than the refined oil and uh, there are some uh, ways of clean up this ocean oil pollution but it takes very um, it's very uh, expensive and it takes time so this table summarizes the um, prevention measures and cleanup measures for coastal the water pollution. So in order to prevent the coastal water pollution or ocean water pollution, we have to reduce the input of toxic pollutant from the land, and we have to separate sewage and stone lines and ban dumping of waste and sewage by ships in the coastal waters, regulate coastal development, oil drilling, and oil shipping. And if we wanted to clean up the, the ocean water pollution, we have to improve oil spill cleanup capabilities, and we have to use some nanoparticles um, to uh, reduce the impact of oil spills but it's again some technologies under development so it's not fully implemented in practice and it is required to have a secondary treatment of these coastal sewage and use uh, we have to use wetland solar aquatic or other measure method to treat sewage, otherwise the ocean water may be polluted. And we need to reduce surface water pollution from non-point sources. Uh, we have to reduce erosion by keeping cropland covered with um, vegetable. And we have to reduce the amount of fertilizers and we have to build plant the buffer zones of uh, vegetation and also we have to use organic farming techniques although some people say this organic farming technique also cause non pollution pollution because they still use fertilizers but at least we can uh, reduce the use of uh, pesticides so it's 
partly effective to reduce non-foreign source pollution, but this is not the ultimate solution because organic farming also requires fertilizers. Uh, we have to reduce the uh, amount of pesticides using for in the agriculture activities and we have to control runoff of the stormwater and rainwater because the main source main pathway of this pollutant transport from the non-point source to the water body is the rainwater runoff and by controlling that we can significantly cut out this the incoming of this uh, pollutant. Uh, we need to have tougher pollution regulations for liver stock operations because this is uh, one of the main source of non-point source pollution and we have to deal better with the animal waste. Animal waste contains very very high concentration of organics and nitrate and phosphate and once we have these pollutants in the water, we'll have a very big problem. In the United States, in 1972, Clean Water Act was became active to reduce water pollution from point sources. And and EPA and uh, uh, have EPA were experimenting with the discharge trading policy. So, by building the wastewater treatment plant and by improving the efficiency of the wastewater treatment, we can properly control this point source water pollution. So, actually, this is why we have to learn to design this wastewater treatment plant because this is one of the uh, most effective way to prevent the water pollution uh, from point source uh, contamination. And as we already learned, um, wastewater treatment plants consist of three major processes, primary sewage treatment, secondary sewage treatment, and tertiary or advanced sewage treatment. So primary treatment is mainly physical, and secondary treatment is mainly biological and tertiary is mainly chemical or physical or sometimes we use biological tertiary treatment. And uh, the, if we consider the sewer system, separate sewer system is more effective than the combined sewer system to control the uh, water contamination. But sometimes, in some places, it is very difficult to change the combined sewer system to the separate sewer system, so we need to find a way to compromise this kind of situation. And this picture shows how we can improve the septic tank to uh, improve the water quality. Uh, this is very familiar picture, I guess, because we've uh, we've mentioned this several times. So this is the general process diagrams for the wastewater treatment. So this is the primary, this is the secondary. So bar screen, grid chamber, primary sedimentation, the aeration, secondary clarification, the disinfection, sludge treatment sludge disposal. So that's the traditional wastewater treatment process. Uh, if the point source pollution is, uh, is a problem, <clears throat> we have to improve the wastewater treatment uh, process. Uh, sometimes not only the organic matters but also other water pollutants such as nutrients, and some toxic chemicals are problems. So um, in such cases, we need to remove toxic waste before water <coughs> goes to the municipal sewage treatment plants. 
and we also have to reduce or elim eliminate use and waste of toxic chemicals and um, sometimes people say the wetland based uh, uh, wastewater treatment system is effective by using some natural uh, cleanup process so in the future what we have to consider is the way of working with nature so not only just uh, doing some artificial measures, but also um, make uh, incorporating with the, some natural process, we can significantly improve the treatment efficiency of water pollutant and reduce the cost of the water treatment. So, for instance, um, this is actually the wastewater treatment system using uh, living plant. So it does not look like uh, conventional wastewater treatment systems. It looks much nice and it looks very good. And it can actually uh, improve the water quality. And, so, and it is very economic. It does not require, uh, it's, n it's not very expensive pro uh, system. So this is one of the solutions that we have to consider. Although in some places they are also implementing this kind of system, but it's not widely, uh, it has not widely, it has not been widely applied. So this is why we have to learn more about the wastewater treatment. So there are sustainable ways to reduce and prevent water pollution. Developed country, bottom up, Political pressures to pass laws are required. In developing countries, um, um, there should be some um, the activities to deal with not only the point source pollution but also the non-point source pollution. In fact, uh, there are a lot of ideas that we can reduce the water pollutions by reducing the use of fertilizers, uh, reducing the use of pesticides, and improving some the toilet systems. So um, in addition to the things uh, in this slide, there are a lot of things that we can do. So the wastewater, the control of water pollution requires new ideas, innovative approaches, and this is why we have to learn that in this class. So that's all for today's lecture.